BLT time. Fresh better boy right off the vine. Yes, sir. Oh, hey, 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 guys. Look at that. Better boy, June 13th. How did he do it? I gambled. Planted four tomatoes at the very beginning of April. Come on with me, I'll show you my East Garden first. All right, all right, it is still, it's about midday, so I'm still kind of shooting into the sun, which isn't ideal. Uh, but you can see to the left of the screen is the north and we are on the west side so what we did here this year anyway in the so-called east garden is we planted up blue lake pole beans all right so we put those on the north of a tomato patch and that will actually help hold in the heat there's a gap through here you can't walk through this um, you get these runners, of course. But you got to keep them off your tomato plants. I'll probably end up clipping that group. But those are the blue lakes. And they are already blooming up. Lots of blooms rolling already. And of course, she's up to five foot. I had to run a wire. Give them some more place to run. But what's cool about this is that ground down there was just pure clay. Well, not pure clay, but it was heavy clay. Oh, up until about three months ago. And I treated it, got a lot of cow manure in there. Check the pH and all that good stuff. And this was just to see if I could grow anything in this brand new piece of the garden and hopefully it will produce and there's another little path so I can get around the back side everything's tight in here if you follow me you know I try to maximize my space all right now this so it's on top of it you can't really see it well especially with the Sun that's my tomato patch I got eight tomatoes in here and six different types and it just looks like a jungle and I know if you like prune you got to prune this stuff well yeah we pull the suckers and we do prune for airflow okay, and there's gaps through the bottom and we keep the bottom as clear as possible and it's just slam full of flowers now the front four you got an early girl a better boy what I just picked there big boy and a German Johnson up in the front and you can't tell the difference on the camera of course but I put those in at the beginning of April as you can see the tallest one there that is the big boy and that's as tall as I'm going to let him get it's running about seven and a half foot already and then the back the tallest one there <laughs> that's a sweet 100 of course this one I did not prune enough <clears throat> this back side's a little messy um, if I had to do it again I would plant six not eight I tried to squeeze eight in two rows into an eight foot length and it was just overzealous so next year I'll just plant six give them some more space but believe it or not I haven't had any issues with that tightness I've been fighting the aphids and the tomato hornworm uh, you look, where's that? There you go. See right there, that's where aphids have che uh, chewed off the blooms. There's one bloom left on that. 
and it's been a war. I use uh, dish soap and lemon juice and water, including a spray. I don't use chemicals and detergents and all that stuff. This is pretty much all organic. I do pull the suckers, like I said, and I do some pruning. Uh, I know the, the old saying, we're growing tomatoes, not leaves, and that's true, but this is the natural state of the plant. I personally don't want to go hog wild pruning. Um, what I do focus on though is keeping the bottom flowing and the gap between the plants, but obviously I got them too close this year. But it hasn't been a moisture issue yet. The disease is just aphids and the good old hornworm. All right, so then down in the foreground, now this is the south side. So I got my shorter plants, this is our uh, peppers. Okay, so these guys, jalapenos, that put suns on them. So in the peppers, again, this is June 13. These are our cayennes. One of three plants, doing very well. And back there are the Cubanellas. And they're coming in as well, as you can see. And then we have another mild pepper, banana. And there's three banana plants. And of course, we've been eating off of that already. And then finally, we got two jalapenos, two plants growing here side by side. So you notice we have uh, separated the mild peppers from the hot peppers, because they will, the hot will make a mild hot if you get them too close together, They'll cross pollinate. And that's how we do it. And of course, left myself a little path here, so I can get in and work primarily these tomatoes. Again, there's some gappage in there, keep some airflow. You can see here, <coughs> that was one of four hornworms. Just clipped it off, removed the worm, off it went. Excuse me. And there's our sweet 100s. A lot of clusters in there already. All the tomatoes have fruit on it. Uh, of course, we've been eating on early girls. And uh, let's see. I think we had a better boy already. Maybe not. Down here. This is the big boy. Four on the bottom. And the German Johnson's got a couple, but if you know Johnson's, they don't produce as much per plant. But boy, they're delicious. It does have a nice cluster coming on the top. And again, you know, if I'm pruning like crazy, I don't have a chance of harvesting that because it would be gone. Okay, so the back side of the east garden, so this is furthest to the east, you see the privacy fence there. So in the mornings you're not getting sun. So what I did, that's a Carolina hybrid going up that trellis there. Okay. And all told I got eight Carolina hybrids in here. And you can see blooms you can pick them up it's easier to see on that tomato cage I guess and they'll climb so I'll put those closest to the fence because when they climb they'll catch the west sun 
and then down below it, these are bush. And that's another eight. So you got 16 of these plants in here. And under that foliage is just flower city. There's flowers, flowers, flowers. Flowers, flowers, flowers everywhere. It's going to be a good year. We're already eating cucumbers. And today's lunch compliments of the garden. Got a BLT with the better boy on there. And it is delicious. Jeff's already eating on hers. Mm -hmm. And fresh cucumbers in vinegar right out of the garden. It'll be a good lunch. And guess what? This is all costing me 60 cents. Probably between the cucumber seed and the Blue Lake seed, I spent about a dollar and ten cents. I got a wholesaler that serves small farms, and I'm not paying $2.89 and up for a package that has a handful of seeds when I can get a lot more seeds without the package, just scooping it out of the bin. They always laugh when I go in there because I'm there. As far as seeds go, I spend the least amount of money because I don't have a lot of land. But if it's there, you know, you would too. I've got plenty of seed left over. I mean, there's no sense in spending money on packages if you've got somebody local that's stocking seed. And these guys aren't done yet. They'll keep on keeping on. You can see that one's trying to get up over the fence. So we're going to be doing some pickling. So just to sum up, again, on the south side, you put your shorter plants, move into your taller plants, and that's our tomato patch. And then you want your beans on the north, because it will hold the heat up against these tomatoes. And if you're growing on a fence, throw your cucumbers there and get a viner to grow up the fence. So on the east side, it will catch the west sun. Of course, if it's on the west side, it'll keep catch the morning sun either way, but you want a viner on the fence because it'll get up and catch more sunlight. And we've been eating cucumber. And we've been eating pepper and tomatoes. And we do have an early girl in there. We were eating tomatoes in the middle of May because I planted it in the beginning of April. Cucumbers have probably been eaten since late May. Oh, I forgot to mention this. You see all these marigolds in here? For those that don't know, they're good for pest control. Good to have around your peppers and your tomatoes. They help. All right, let's head over to the West Garden. All right, so we're gonna head over to the West Garden here. Inside this white picket fence is our herb garden. But then some basil, some more of that marigold. Over here on this side, it's a row of fennel. Looks that's a perennial, so that'll stay. It's one of our leftover onions there, I got a pool. Had some white onion in here, been eating on that forever. And down there is lemon balm. And that, it's like any other mint. And that's also perennial, so that'll stay. And this is our Italian oregano plant that she's getting leggy. I'm gonna have to prune the heck out of her, but not yet. She's just gotten all over the place. In the back of there, that's dill. Okay, I had to prune off the heads of that because it was starting to flower. And cilantro, we had a heat wave. Cilantro went to seed real early this year. And I did take the flower heads and the pods, so I'll get coriander out of it anyway. A little daylily, just for effect. They are pretty. There's a first year parsley. We pulled our second year parsley for the root. This one should start getting off once it heats up. 
And that is a second year rosemary. The healthiest herb plant we have in here. Down on the ground there, that's your garden sage. More rosemary in the back. And right there is your purple. Second year, it's a little, little sketchy, but it's still producing some. No need to pull it, doesn't look the best. Not very aesthetic, but we're using it to cook, so who cares? <laughs> and then down here, that's my English time. So for cooking, obviously. And this is lemon thyme, and I've never grown this until this year. And it's got these really pretty, it's really pretty flowering on it. So we'll let all this fill in. I'm going to end up moving the parsley back towards the uh, fence and just leave that gap there. There is more oregano, but I planted it too close. Uh, it's Greek oregano on the ground down there. But when I planted it, this Italian oregano was nowhere near this large, and it just went crazy. So it's choking out the other one. So I'm going to have to rearrange this a little bit next time, probably in the fall. All right, so the herb garden is the centerpiece of the west garden. And then in the far west of the west garden is our squash patch. We have zigzagged. We've got zucchini. Zigging one way and yellow squash zigging the other. I don't have anything large on the vine right now. New fella coming in there. See that? Because I can't show. There's some yellow back there. Uh, here's some photos. We've been pulling for about. Oh, 14 days or so. Some big zucchini. So we made zucchini bread. And we also made zucchini meatballs. And they are yum delicious. So this one's getting ready to run again. Give it another 10 days. We'll be pulling from that. And if we step on the back side, now you can see here I'm getting shade in here. And this looks ratty like this. That's a garden? Well, actually, yeah. Underneath there, you can see down here this pine straw. I treat it this row. Again, use some cow manure and whatnot. I come in here and clean all this out. Edge this hedge. Pull a periwinkle and just wild vine. This is going to be our sweet potato row. And we'll get about six to nine of those in there. And even though it's shadowed, it's under a dogwood, it will. I mean, they're sweet potato vines, so they're going to run to the sun. They'll come up over this path I got here, this little brick walkway. Which, again, for perspective, we're on the back side of the herb garden. Alright, so when you come in from the east to this one, we'll have sweet potato running. Getting ready to do that here any day, like this week. And then it walks you straight back to the squash. And of course you've got the herb part in here in the front getting the sun. And lastly we will do our fruit. This is a Bruce Plum. And had a pretty good run this year, but we do compete with squirrels. They eat more than we eat actually. And they drop early, so they're all dropped out. Um, I'm going to prune this again. I haven't pruned it in two seasons. Do have the airflow. If you do grow plum trees, remember right through here, you see all that room. You got to do that. You got to have air flow through the middle or it'll get all diseased up. And I've let the branches get too long, but they'll be coming back. So next year we will have a very large year. You know, gallons and gallons and gallons of plums from one tree. All right, and then the, we do have another plum tree that's not in the backyard. And I will walk you over here. 
the foreground's a little messy. I'll clean that up, of course. It's summertime, you know how it goes. This is a Concord grape. She's doing her thing. She's loaded. This is more than less for the birds. We do eat off of it. Look up underneath there. You see all that. It's just loaded up as usual. We don't eat a lot of this. We do eat off of it, but not as much as you would think. Because of this privacy fence, it's treated lumber, and it will leach. So you certainly wouldn't want to take these grapes and make a bunch of wine. You'd probably be poisoning yourself. I mean, a little bit's not going to hurt you. A few grapes, I mean, but I wouldn't eat all of this. I just wouldn't take the risk. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a chemist, and I have no way to tell them what's in these grapes. <laughs> but yeah, she's running. Uh, I pruned it off the top, and pruned the bottom a little bit, but she's running, let's see, 1, 2, 16, 18, over, it's about 20 foot wide. It's kind of aesthetic. It is nice to come over here. In August, they'll ripen up. Come over here and grab a grape and have yourself a grape. The key to this, of course, is water. Water, 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 water. Lots of water. Get those uh, fruits nice and fat. And then you cut them off. Cut them off in August and they'll ripen up for you. June bug on there. What's up, Mr. June bug? Well, hey guys, thanks for watching that little tour. We'll be back in a month, of course. And uh, in the meantime, we'll probably throw up one or two more special videos about special topics. Um, have any comments, suggestions, whatnot, of course, you know what to do. Appreciate you watching and happy gardening.